Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is revisiting another video I did which I'll link in the top right. Advanced autopilot techniques and hints and tips. Ah, nav approach. I'm going to do that video again with the G1000 NXI mod as you can see here. Because I know a couple of people are having difficulties with that. So for thoroughness I'm going to do it again with the G1000 NXI and I'm also going to let which is a big no-no in flight simulation and real flying I'm going to let the autopilot auto land us so let's get on with it Okay, so we're all starting at the same page. On the main menu in Flight Simulator, so you can use, see I'm using my gamepad for this part. I'll be using the mouse in the sim, so try and have a mouse handy. But for this part, I'll use the gamepad. Go to your profile. Up here on the main screen. Profile, press your A button. Go to Content Manager. A button again, or left click. In update available, if you've got anything here, le press your A button or left click on there. I'm going to press my A button there. If you have anything for NXI mod, the G1000 NXI, an update available, update it. An update dropped in the past few days, I believe. I've got mine updated already, which is why nothing's showing. If you do have anything here for NXI, update it. And aside from that, we'll go back to the main menu, go to profile, uh, sorry, go to world map. Press my A button there. I'm going to zoom in on the south of England, the same as we did in the last video. Zoom in, zoom in over the London area. London City Airport, I'm going to select the main thing where you can see London City's come up there. Press my A button, press setters departure. Zoom out a little bit over Heathrow, same thing on the main icon, the main point of interest, so you can see it there, E-G-L-L -L Heathrow. Press my A button, set as arrival. It will put us on an arrival for runway 27 right, we're going to change that in the simulator again, so don't worry about that. Make sure you've got your... Cessna 172 with the G1000's NXI selected. And press fly. Okay, so I'm set up at London City Airport, runway 27. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use my mouse for this from now on. Going to go to the top here, go to the weather tab. And go live weather. Just click on that live thing. I believe it's quite cloudy. It's cloudy where I am. I'm not too far from London. Yep, similar in some ways to where I am. It will do. Good weather for IFR flying, instrument flying. Going to go down to my right G1000. Now, just in case some of you have not seen my other videos, you may have your heading heading up. So basically, we should be heading at uh, west ways, but you could be seeing something similar. It doesn't really matter, but what I prefer is to have north showing up which will put our map in a, f in a familiar way that the old G1000s was, so that west will be west, north will be north. To do this, go to the menu. Either use your gamepad, I'm using my mouse in this case. Left click on menu. Left, uh, where it's got map settings, so that should be flashing there, press enter, which is down here. Press the enter button. Use your inner knob on this FMS controls and mouse up in this case so that ma uh, heading up HDG up is flashing here use your outer knob here to change that so I'm going to use the outer knob I'm scrolling down on the outer knob to go to north up which is the familiar way the navigation map usually shows gonna press enter there I'm going to get rid of that menu by pressing menu and again and as you can see now it's a familiar map to the way that we, it used to be in the old G1000s. 
Now, we still can't pan this map. I found no way of panning it still, so I still don't think that's implemented. So we can't pan over Heathrow Airport. It doesn't really matter. We'll do what we did in the previous video. We'll go to the procedure page here. So procedures, proc, left click. Select approach should be flashing. So we're going to press enter there. Go down to enter and press it. And the approach. We're going to go down to R nav again. So I'm going to use the inner knob on the FMS. I'm going to scroll up with my mouse wheel till I get to R nav. 27 left Y. There's R nav 27 left Y and R nav 27 left Z. If you go and look at my other video, which I linked at the beginning of this video, Ace has left a good comment there on the differences between Y and Z. Aces is also doing a series at the moment on tutorial lessons for Flight Simulator. The, the tutorial lessons that come with it. He's hopefully going to do a series of videos. He's got one up at the moment. I'm going to link that, well, in the top right here, in fact. But I'll link his channel in the description. So, anyway, back to this. We've got RNAV, 27 left Y. Make sure you've got the right one selected. Press your enter button down here. Left click. Use your inner knob. Mouse up to go down to load and press enter. And that should now be loaded into our flight plan. I'm going to click on the flight plan button to hide that. One thing I'm going to do, I don't think it matters in this case, it still follows it anyway. But I'm going to click on the procedures button again, left click. And where activate approach is flashing, I'm just going to press enter there. Don't think it really matters, but I'm going to do it in this case anyway. I'm going to go to my left G1000 again now. I hope you're all catching up. If not, rewind the video. On the alt, I'm going to set, like the previous video, our autopilot altitude for 3000 feet. So I'm going to use the inner knob on the alt here. Set it to 3000 feet. I do suggest going to watch that first video that I linked right at the beginning because I, I show a chart in that. I'm not, I'm not going to do it again here just to save time and I've already done it. I showed this sort of Heathrow chart and how we're approaching it and the different waypoints and navigation points. Go and watch that first. But I've just selected our autopilot altitude. It's what I want my autopilot to climb at 3000 feet. I'm going to use flight level change. I discuss flight level change in the video that I'll link in the top right. I'm going to click the flight level change button. I know people have been having difficulties with this as well. Click on flight level change. I'll scroll in a bit. Next to flight level change mode, you've got nose up and vertical speed nose down. I'm going to click vertical speed nose up. I've explained this already in the video I've just linked. But what I'm doing here, I'm setting an 80 knot autopilot speed for the autopilot to maintain in the climb. So I'm asking the autopilot to speed up, even at full throttle, keep 80 knots. And whatever the nose is doing to maintain 80 knots will be what the autopilot will do to, to get us to that 3000 feet. So it will maintain 80 knots in the climb, and the nose of the aircraft will be de the, the nose of the aircraft will be dependent on that, and it will climb at our 80 knot speed. Like I said, go and watch that video that I linked. Uh, that explains it a lot better. But I've already gone over that. So we're all set up now. I'll come back up to our top, our main cockpit view, and let's go fly. And okay, from here on out, I'm going to use my gamepad. So I'm going to press, hold down my A button. Release my parking brake. So full throttle. Maintain the center line. We'll get to 60 knots. And hopefully take off safely. So landing, we've got to be worried about. We're letting the autopilot land us, but that should be okay. So I'm over 60 knots, I can pull back on my left analogue stick. I'm going to use trim, just so I can relieve pressure on that left analogue stick. And that allows me to go down to my left G1000. 
going to mouse over the autopilot, turn the autopilot computer on. The autopilot will maintain 80 knots and the climb will be relative to the nulls of the autopilot uh, maintaining our 80 knots. So as you can see it's climbing to our 3000 feet, it's maintaining 80 knots. I'm going to click now the navigation button, nav mode, left click and the autopilot now should follow our course, this magenta line, right into Heathrow. And indeed, like I said, it's actually going to land us there as well. So hands off, I can go outside, take a look at beautiful London. Weather is similar, it's a bit more cloudy where I am. I'm an hour down from London on the coast. Uh, as the crow flies. Yeah, it's similar somewhat. We should have no problem seeing the runway at minimums. Minimums will be a few hundred feet. And we're over a thousand. And we can see the ground at the moment. So we should have no trouble seeing the runway. And regardless, the autopilot's going to land us. <sighs> it's going to plonk us down. Now, I'm not teaching bad habits. I usually get the inevitable uh, comments of people saying, Oh, you're teaching bad habits. You should never let the autopilot land you. I know. And I never use autopilot to land the aircraft. I'm just showing this. People have asked me, can you use the autopilot to land you? Yes, you can. Uh, not safely. Uh, if you were in a real aircraft, you'd probably be full of bruises. And your undercarriage will most likely be knackered. But you can let it plonk you down, as you'll see <laughs> more or less on the runway. Now... Something to note here, the G's come up and I can see my glide path indicator here, the diamond which will come down as we near the airport. If that appears or doesn't, doesn't appear yet, don't worry, it will appear. Certainly when we get closer to the airport, if you followed my steps, that should appear and you should see the glide path indicator, the diamond, come down to centre, which will put us on a perfect approach. Once we get nearer, and that diamond comes nearer to the centre, I'm going to press the approach button, which is the only other thing we need to do. I'm not going to do it yet, but I'll do that later. Oh, very simple, this. You see, we're above clouds now, beautiful clouds. I do have a very special package uh, which I'll be reviewing at some point which will add more realistic clouds apparently. Uh, I'll probably put something on my members only videos just to show you my first impressions on that but I will be doing a full review on YouTube at some point of that. And also later today, it may already be up, by the time this video is up, I'm going to announce my next live stream flight on Discord and on YouTube communi community page for those of you who are not on Discord. Do come on Discord, everybody's welcome. We've got a friendly bunch of people there, Xbox, PC users, everybody's welcome there. I'll link it in the description for you, of course. We're coming up to our approach sort of legs and phrases and navigation points this is the sort of glide path stage here if i zoom out i can't pan the map but i can zoom out uh, let's zooming in zoom out that's the sort of glide path stage here and that's the airport <laughs> we're just going to let the autopilot follow it follow it straight onto the airport so when we get to this point you should see that glide slope a uh, glide path indicator. It's already started to come down. You can see now it's changed to V. Don't panic if that happens. It will change back to G as we get nearer. I'll go into more explanation of this in a later video, but don't worry if that happens. It will change back to G, as you'll see. The only other thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, make sure you've got GPS on. Press the CDI key once or twice if it's not showing GPS here and GPS here it's important that you have GPS if you're following an RNAV approach it follows a GPS approach or principles basically 
So there you go, plenty of cloud. I've got multiplayer, live multiplayer on, why not? <laughs> they better clear a path when I come into Heathrow, because goodness knows what the autopilot will do. It should be okay. We're turning at now onto our glide path, uh, basically our last, our straight and approach to Heathrow here. See the cat diamonds moving down. Don't worry about this symbology here. It will change back. Once that comes more down to centre, I'll be clicking, like I said, the approach button. It's coming down to centre, the diamond now. And then the autopilot will follow us, bring us down onto the runway. It's coming down. I'm going to press the approach mode now. And as you'll see, the autopilot is adjusting our altitude to bring us down on a perfect approach, or perfect-ish, to the runway. Can't see much there at the moment, there's a lot of cloud about, but we're still, we're still above 2,000 feet. We will get below that cloud, I hope. And it doesn't really matter in this case. Again, I'm not panicking, it's not changed to a G, but... The autopilot is following our glide path, and it's maintaining us on that path, on an approach to the runway. Oh, my throttle was way up, something I didn't keep an eye on there. I'm going to start throttling back anyway. I've got the arrow into the white arc. I'm going to try and get the autopilot... See, now it's changed to a G. I'm going to get the autopilot into a position where I can... Sorry, the speed down to a position where I can go flaps 1 and flaps 2. I'm going to keep it on autopilot anyway. So I'm going to slow down enough so I can get my flaps deployed. Now we can see the ground. We can see Twickenham Stadium, which is where I lived for a couple of years at one point. Again, it's the days of Concord. I used to live there. Concord used to be flying over me twice a day. I was on the flight path. It's pretty much on the flight path for Concord. <laughs> and it was a heck of a sight. And all kinds of jumbo jets. Lovely, lovely times. Slow down a bit more just to ensure that I'm getting to that flaps one. I want this white strip on this speed ribbon to, sh to come to that yellow point here. Which it is now. I'm going to go flaps one. Look out my left window to make sure flaps have deployed. And they have. And the autopilot has full control. I'm just controlling the speed and flaps, essentially. Let's get outside, see what's happening. Can't really see much of Heathrow, so it's good conditions, like I said, to do uh, instrument flying this. I can go flaps two there. Second stage of flaps. Speed's okay. Heathrow is ahead of us. It's difficult to see at the moment, but it is ahead of us. Because of all these name tags, and goodness knows what. Don't want to be slowing down too much, so I'm just going to speed up slightly there, just so we're in, in no danger of stalling. Don't like it when it goes really under 60 knots on this part of the approach phrase. Yeah, we can't really see much, can we? But we're still over a thousand feet, so I'm not too worried at the moment. We're not at our minimums. I've not actually set minimums. But let's say minimums of 300 feet. Doesn't really matter in this case, like I said, because the uh, autopilot. There's London Heathrow. The marker has come up now. If we zoom in, as the autopilot's going to land us. Let me finish what I was saying there. I've got a habit of doing that. There we go. We can see the runway now, so no problem. Two white, two reds on the Pappy lights. Just see what the speed's doing. I can slow down a touch there. Now actually speeding up, so I'm just going to slow down a touch. And actually put my last stage of flaps in there. And when we get a few hundred feet, <laughs> like I said, by now I'll probably take autopilot off. But when we get a few hundred feet above the runway, I'm going to throttle back completely and hopefully the autopilot will just land us. The couple of times I've practiced this, 
it's landed me just before the runway, pretty much uh, where the runway lights indicators markers are. In a real Cessna, if you crash into them, it's game over. Uh, but I'm just showing you this. Like I said, I'm not condoning this. I'm not advising people do this on a regular basis. It's fun to try and it's a simulator, so why not? There we go. I'm not panicking. Well, I don't need to panic because the autopilot's going to do the work for me. I would definitely take uh, autopilot off now. By now. No worries. This may work better on some runways and airports than others. Uh, as you can see, it's still got us lined up center line with the runway gradually coming in speeds okay check the flaps again fall flaps no problem there's not much to do now really <laughs> it really is letting the uh, autopilot bring us down Let's see how it does this time. Like I said, it's landed me around here previously. Uh, which in real life, you'll smash into those lights. As you'll see the kind of uh, lights on poles just before the runway. And it looks like it's going to do it again. I'm a few hundred feet off the ground. I'm just going to null my throttle now. Hold my B button. See what I mean? Now in a real Cessna... Well, it got us down. In a real Cessna, you probably be wrapped around one of those poles but regardless let's break there that should be fine that should be fine and what I'll do come on stop that's better I'll get outside and finish the video Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that's been useful. I know a lot of people are having trouble with the G1000 NXI. I've getting to grips with it. I hope that's helped. Give the video a thumbs up if it's been helpful to you. Subscribe for more, many more flight simulator videos on the way. And I'll see you soon.